Hello everyone, welcome to yet another edition of Content Club India from Semrush and this is Rohan Ayer welcoming you all to discuss content strategy and content marketing with us. Today we have two very special guests with us and one is Anshul Motwani from Vitipen. He is the co-founder of Vitipen which is one of India's foremost platforms that connects content writers and agencies. Anshul is also on LinkedIn's list of uh, top 50 content marketers in India. And from Australia, we have Jason Moon, who is director of search at Overdose Digital. It's, an, it's a worldwide marketing agency. And Jason is an experienced marketer specializing in digital marketing and analytics. And he works with some of Australia's biggest brands. So I'm very happy to have both of them. And I'm sure you're going to have a great time learning outreach tactics, which is what we are discussing today, how to get your content published on third-party platforms and how to promote your brand. Uh, before we begin, I want to remind you guys about our big blogging contest, which is open for all content marketers in India. So this is your chance to win a MacBook Pro with the right content. So if you have a blog that has a decent number of visitors, we have over a hundred topics related to marketing for you to choose from and do your best to write a great blog post. You can go to big blogging, you can go to bloggingcontest.semrush.com and take part in our big blogging contest. So uh, let me quickly let our guests for today introduce themselves. Then we are going to audit a couple of sites which you guys have submitted and we are going to ask them some interesting questions on outreach tactics. So let's start with Jason. Jason, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's uh, definitely humbling to be invited uh, by Rowan to join you guys today with, on the Content Club India. Um, so my background, so my name is Jason. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. I was just having conversation with Rohan before that is uh, summer here in um, Melbourne, Australia. And today is 35 degrees and I'm literally sweating and um, almost dying from the heat. And uh, so Rohan we, said that's we in important. India, we know that it's not a lot, right? It's cool. Okay, 35. Okay. <laughs> You still some way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my background is in SEO, um, and, and I predominantly work with uh, e-commerce businesses. Uh, bread, uh, bread and butter of, of, of our business here is uh, building and marketing e-commerce businesses. So I deal with everything from simple things like keyword research through to content marketing initiatives for uh, e-commerce brands here in Australia. Great. Anshul, over to you. So thanks a lot, Rohan, for inviting me to this webinar. Uh, it's a great being part here. So you know, quick introduction about myself. Myself, you know, I'm founder at Vidipen. So Vidipen is a content creation platform uh, based out of India. We've got more than 350 writers who are working with us at the moment. We have worked with more than 200 businesses, including the likes of Swiggy, Freshworks, Farmeasy, Daily Hunt, and many more. Uh, so what we do is we essentially help businesses create content for all their marketing channels, either it be blogs, white papers, ebooks, and many more. So you know, I've also worked with these businesses working, you know, for the things like content strategy, SEO, and primarily we do create, you know, content for all these marketing channels. Great. Uh, so I think we can start with a few questions which I have for you. Uh, you're ready? guys and we we are also taking questions from the audience so if anybody of you watching us here you can ask your questions in the youtube feed or you can tweet to us using the hashtag semrush india and i'm sure our guests will be happy to answer any questions related to content marketing or even digital marketing uh, so i'm beginning this session uh, on outreach tactics with a few of my own questions which i'm sure that you guys want to know um so guys what is what are the various goals of outreach why do content marketers need to consider an outreach strategy why do we need to put our content on third party platforms Jason, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so as everyone knows, content is king. Uh, mm -hmm. So when content is king, content promotion is queen. 
So when you build a nice piece of content, if you don't promote it, be proud of it and be proactive in, in pushing that out to all those channels that you are currently active in, no one is going to see it, no one is going to take interest at in it. So uh, one of the tactics of promoting a piece of content is to outreach, to tweet at people, to go, hey, we've written this piece about uh, X, Y, Z. We think you might find it interesting. What do you think? Um, you know, starting using using a piece of content as a conversation starter um, is is I think key, because otherwise people won't know that this awesome piece of content is sitting in the, on the World Wide Web, and um, yeah, it's very important in terms of uh, content promotion. Anshul, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I completely agree with you said that content uh, is a king, but distribution is a queen. Uh, you know, content distribution is the next 50% of the content marketing, right? And uh, one of the basic goals of what I personally believe is uh, for the outreaches is usually brand awareness, right? Because it helps you attract the users uh, and the users, the model kind of uh, the geography, you can attract the people who and you make them aware of about what you do and you know what you have to offer. Uh, so brand awareness is one of uh, there are certain other channel you know objective as well. For example, lead generation uh, that businesses have been using for uh, you know their content marketing and you know through third party websites. Okay. Uh, so w what kind of tactics do you guys use when when you want to uh, say get your content out there so what are the different platforms you target or what what different strategies are there great you so do you want me to go yes ahead? yeah yeah anshul any anyone anshul you you go first online i know you know if like to read more about this particular strategy of reaching out to audiences, you'll find multiple other answers. But I personally started right at the point of while creating a buyer persona. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I'm creating a buyer persona, I try to understand who my target audience is. And after from from buyer persona, when I move to content strategy, I try to identify the go, uh, you know identify the target platforms where my buyer persona is available right so where my audience usually hangs out what are the you know what are the platforms which they would be following what are the influencing platforms where uh, you know which are actually influencing my target audiences so that's where you know uh, the place where i actually start so once this is done you know after that i think the process is very simple because all you then need to do is identify the right person who's taking the decision uh, and you know who's who will probably allow you to post your content or you know probably partner with you and getting your content onto their particular platforms uh to reach out to them you can definitely use uh you can go through the email or linkedin as a process and you know while we're doing that a couple of things that are very very important is understanding what their audience actually wants what the particular publication platform is talking about what is their style of uh, reaching you know and while we are probably putting our email out there, you know, pitching us, pitch, pitching about a company, we should definitely focus about these things, ensuring that the end publication or the end platform is convinced with what we have to offer. So, you know, aligning with their objectives and at the same point of time, understanding where and what our target audience wants is the core part of the overall strategy of outreach. Uh, so, Jason, you want to add to that? No, I think um, Anshu um, covered it pretty comprehensively. You know, I think the key the key to outreach is identifying where your target audience is hanging out online. So if I say, you know, if I was um, doing content marketing and outreach for a a B two B business, you know, they're not gonna you're not gonna find the B two B people on Facebook. You know, LinkedIn is probably a better platform to connect with people and chat to people. And you know, B two B people probably read. Uh, different blogs from people like you and I. Um, so we've got to find out where those, uh, I, I call them uh, assets. I treat them as assets because that's where you want to be contributing to and providing value to them and then creating meaningful relationships with the uh, webmasters and publications and, uh, or editors that look after those publications. 
Right. So you guys uh, emphasized the importance of different platforms according to the target audience of the marketer. Uh, but eventually, I would say the goal is to bring back the customer to our own platform or our own blog or uh, our own website. Uh, how do marketers go about doing that? Eventually, the goal of outreach is to make uh, people come from the platform where we are targeting to back to our own media or our own blog so how do you guys what are your tips for doing that um i think i'll go first here yeah, um yeah. so i guess the the important thing is when you are publishing content externally mm -hmm. um is not to do the hard sell a lot of businesses they um they make the wrong move by giving the hard sell right at the start Oh, we are the best in this and that. We are really good at this and that. This tool does this really, really well. You know, they're tooting their own horn. I think that's the wrong move. What you need to do is explain, take people on a journey. That's what content is meant to do, you know. Uh, the content should go out, outline the benefits of your business, what you're trying to do, uh, pr promote a case study, you know, walk people through a case study of how you helped a business or, or, or someone get from A to B. And then after you've done that, you can do a subtle sell, not a hard sell to go sign up here or come visit my website right now for more information uh, or to connect <laughs> with me. Uh, here are my details and links back to my website. I think by doing that uh, does two things. One is, you know, you're taking people on a journey. You're not giving a hard sell and they don't get put off by uh, a snake oil salesman mentality. Um, and then towards the end, what you're doing as well, you're actually um, helping the website owner, the publisher, um, in terms of creating, oh, that post that you did for me was really good, you know, uh, we got a lot of traffic from it. Can you write me the next one? Can you write me the next one? So you actually build up a relationship, not just with the audience, but also with the publisher themselves. That's true. Yeah. But for that, you need patience, which exactly. uh, doesn't come no. <laughs> easy, <laughs> as you all. might know from a lot of your clients. So yeah. uh, like how, how do content marketers convince like management or whoever they are marketing for that uh, this is a long drawn out process that needs a lot of patience uh, or or is there a small sort of hard sell like if if we are using strategies like guest blogging so is there an immediate advantage is there any such tactic with an immediate advantage that would show that uh, okay you have patience for the for the end result or for the huge outcome. But here are some small benefits that help you keep patience meanwhile, which which I mean, show to show to the uh, <coughs> management or the business themselves that it's not all in vain or their money is not being wasted down the drain. Me? Yeah. 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 Um, so in terms of small quick wins, uh, um, yeah, look, I think they are. I think you uh, hit the nail on his head, right? So, guest blogging and guest posting is probably something quick and easy that someone can execute. But I think um, it comes down to the bottom. The bottom line is you need to come up with a relevant topic. But again, at the end of the day, I still think that you can't do a hard sell on someone else's blog. You're just gonna uh, piss people off and stuff like that. But but if your products or the service that you're providing is is so good that you think that you can convince somebody. So your topic could be uh, how this app um, uh, turn around a business and deliver 500% ROI. Yes, someone will actually read that almost immediately. And most likely they wouldn't even um, read the whole article. They'll just go, what tool is this? It's amazing, it's 500% ROI. Click and find out more. So there are other tactics where, you know, if your product is actually really good and you've got third party endorsement and got really good user reviews for it, I'm all for going out and singing and shouting um, on other websites and publications about what I can I have to offer. Great. And how do you do that? So Anshul, I think that's what VTPen specializes in or how how do you do you want to add to that? Uh, how to say? Yeah. Or so. Make it exciting. Yeah. How 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 you can? Start yeah. Hey, everyone, can you? Yeah. Hello. Yes, we can you? hear you. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you. 
So do you want to add to what Jason said about uh, providing small quick wins? Uh, meanwhile, while you have a long strategy or a long term strategy. Oh, I think uh, we lost Anshul. Mm, so uh, while we wait for him to come back. Uh, so sorry, I, I think oh, I missed. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hi. Welcome back. Great. So, Anshul, uh, we were asking you that do you want to add to Jason's uh, tips about how to have some quick wins while uh, while a business is carrying out its long term content strategy? Yeah. So you know, I think Jason was very spot on to the uh, you know when it comes to having the quick wins. I still remember when you asked the first question, it was more about convincing the. Uh, you know, convincing your boss about getting into content marketing. So exactly. just to add, just to add a little bit towards it, uh, you know, I personally believe that businesses do tend to get into content marketing if they actually realize what the end pain and the end goal is, right? So if I take the consideration of India now, in India, content marketing is still at the nascent stage, right? We're still figuring it out. The businesses are still trying to, you know, make their market content marketing, but. Uh, you know, we need to understand what the objective of a business is. Most of the times, if, if you are getting leads, right, if the quality of the leads is not turning out to be well, right, if that's your goal, then businesses do tend to agree about going on with the content marketing. Or it's about the ROI that they're getting from other channels like PPC, uh, you know, or other digital marketing uh, efforts. They tend to then compare what kind of efforts are, can we get from content marketing. Uh, the third part is also building the thought leadership, authority, and the transparency with the end set of users. Now, when these two, three objectives are there, uh, it depends on what stage your business is, what are your goals, what do you want to achieve? And if that is very clear and the marketers are able to clarify, you know, put their word about content marketing and the solution that it can provide, I think that then that becomes very easy. And uh, to start with, what Jason definitely talked about having quick wins, I think that is the one of the first motivation factor which businesses can realize once they start getting into content marketing. Great. So uh, we have some more questions, but I think yeah. it's time for us to audit <laughs> our chosen websites first. Uh, so yeah. we let uh, Jason go first, and Jason is going to be auditing Boobly.com sure. uh, for, for content from a content perspective. So Jason, please. All right. No worries. Uh, can you guys see my screen OK? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So um, a little bit about me, I already said that. So if you guys want to connect with me, all my details are right here. Um, so today we are looking at a site called Woovly. Um, so I think if I understand the business model correctly, it's just like an online platform or an app for users to create a bucket list. And then as you, um, as you go through life and um, you know, experience all the things that's on the bucket list, just tick it off. And also, you share your experiences by, you know, writing uh, short uh, notes and um, stories about your experience, um, taking off um, some activities on your bucket list. So this is what the website looks like. Um, so again, back to the question of is content king? Um, absolutely, content is king. So this is uh, based out of a study from SEM Rush where they looked at uh, all the search engine ranking factors, what makes a website or a piece of content rank so well in, um, in the search engines and in Google specifically. And it's actually the depth and length of content. So uh, the longer a piece of content is, the more in depth a piece of article or something that you're trying to produce is, uh, is longer and more in depth. It gives you the ability to target more keywords and, and has the ability to rank much higher in the search engines. So this is a study from SEM Rush. Um, a few years back, a gentleman called um, Brian Dean, who runs backlinko.com, uh, did a similar study where he looks at um, all the high ranking um, SERPs on Google. And what he found was there's a, there's a strong correlation to the number of words um, and the position in Google that uh, the piece of content is ranking for. So uh, bottom line is uh, depth and length of content definitely matters uh, because we have to remember that Google is still a very um, a textual based search engine and they do have to rely on textual content to um, understand the intent and the, um, the uh, target keywords of the, the keyword, uh, of the page, sorry. 
So um, the way I like to approach content is there are different types of content. Uh, the way I break it down is this. So this is called what, what I call the content pyramid. And we start at the bottom. So at the bottom is what I tend to call hygiene content. So these are your standard things on the website, like your about us page, your your category pages, your your blog posts, your reviews, your your recipes, your product descriptions. Those kind of uh, non-negotiable content pieces that makes a website function. So that's what I call hygiene content. And then as you slowly move up the pyramid. Um, the production and, and the effort to produce the content tends to get a little bit uh, more difficult and the frequency will be slightly less because you're putting more effort into producing something longer form, uh, something well thought out and more data driven. So at, in the middle of the pyramid is what we what I like to call uh, hub based content. So if you have a series of topics that your website is targeting towards, uh, how are you going to group those topics together into a say creating a content hub? So for example, uh, a few years now, a lot of people are into uh, building the ultimate guide to X, Y, and Z. Now, in order to build the, the ultimate guide to X, Y, and Z, you would have had to outline within that ultimate guide all the different elements of that topic. So, uh, and the way to get that few elements of topic would be to collate and curate things that you've already done uh, in the hygiene part and basically bundle it all together into this big content hub. Um, so that's what the content hub is for. Uh, and then the highest up the pyramid is what I like to call hero content. Uh, something that you would probably do like, you know, once every quarter or twice a year. And you tend to coincide that with um, um, other channels and uh, it will be like a big branding piece uh, that you would invest a lot of money, time and effort into it. So uh, for example, it could be a, a brand new uh, category of products that you're trying to launch on the website and you want to get a whole uh, series of influencer marketing campaigns lined up and uh, you're going to do pop-up stores and stuff like that. So a hero piece of content would be something big where you invest in, in content, in videos, in, in audio, in potential TV, radio, and stuff like that. So that's what I call content, uh, hero content, which is high up the uh, content pyramid. Um, in the case of Woovly, uh, I had a quick look at the site and they're doing the hygiene content piece really, really well uh, because they have a lot of user generated content. Uh, so there's new content being added to the website on a daily basis, which is great. Uh, and what they actually need is a way to curate all those good user generated content and create more hub content you know something that uh, groups all these good stories together and it's all these good bucket list experiences together and create a slightly longer form piece of content that will give it ability to um, attract more traffic to the website and last but not least right at the top of the hero content you know it's always good to do one or two big pieces of hero content uh, uh, in a year just to just to uh, continue the momentum that you built by um, um, uh, pushing the brand awareness piece out into the market. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, Woovly gets a lot of user generated content. So this is the uh, bucket list um, a category, if you like, or section of the website. As you can see, it's uh, well laid out. It looks really good. And, and this is getting uh, um, a new content gets added to this page on a, on a daily basis. Um, another example of user generated content on the Woovly website is a story. So this is where um, uh, I look. We call it articles or blog posts, but this is where uh, users share their experiences as they tick off things on their bucket list and say, hey, I've done this, I've traveled to um, Paris and um, this is my experience. And they write a short little um, um, blog post or article, if you will, uh, with some really, really good images uh, and authentic images as well. So um, overall, this uh, entire setup is extremely good. So you're getting, you know, your 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 website that is an open platform where everybody can, um, uh, people are actually building content on your behalf, which is fantastic. So the the issue with Woovly at this point in time is lack of structure, and um, that means it, it, they don't have, they're currently lacking the ability to target um, good keywords, uh, more broader keywords as well. So this is an uh, illustration of their current um, uh, information architecture or, or site structure. Um, that's the top here is the home page, and it breaks down to either a bucket list type of uh, user generated content or stories type of user generated content, and um, that's it. There's just two levels, uh, which is not ideal because it doesn't allow you to target um, those mid funnel type of uh, 
queries and keywords to you know drive more traffic to the website. Um, they have attempted to create some sort of a middle layer uh, hub-based type of scenario uh, by having subcategorization to help users navigate. But the issue is it's, um, it's JavaScript based. So when you click on each of these icons or submenu items, the URL doesn't really change. It's, um, uh, that means Google can't really understand and see that it's actually a standalone page. Um, so it's currently not ideal. And by having this JavaScript setup, it doesn't give you the ability to have unique uh, metadata and on-site elements. And as I mentioned before, zero ability to target uh, a broad range of keywords, for example, bucket list for adventures or bucket list for travel, bucket list for food, bucket list for fitness. There's no way that um, they have the ability to target those keywords uh, at this point in time. Um, as I mentioned, there's uh, plenty of keyword opportunities here in the bucket list world uh, because bucket list can be for travel, food, all those different verticals. And also, there's also uh, a different set of keywords. So things to do before you die, things to do in Bangalore, things to do in Dubai. So there's all these different permutations of what um, Woovly is all about. And you know you can see where I'm getting at. We're trying to create and curate all these user-generated content into all these nice little uh, silos or, or buckets or, or hubs of content uh, that would help users um, and also search engines um, find out that you actually have that content on the website. So it's trying to uh, create that um, user intent on the website to capture uh, more traffic to the site. So this is what I would have, I would recommend Woovly do uh, by adding a middle layer to their current site structure. So under bucket list, I would have standalone pages for travel, food, adventure, uh, places to visit, so on and so forth. And then you bundle and group your stories and bucket lists in a more logical manner, such as um, what's illustrated on the screen right now. So what will happen then, um, you are actually curating and arranging uh, all your user generated content based on uh, keyword research. So for example, if I were to click on adventure sport, the URL would change and it will have a standalone uh, landing page. And um, the page would have unique um, content, unique H1 headings, unique metadata. Um, and that would be uh, far more impactful from a um, traffic generation point of view. Uh, a good example here is Airbnb. Airbnb is sort of the, on a similar boat, but obviously in a different niche, where it's an open platform. Anyone can get verified and say that, hey, I've got this experience that I want to contribute to the Airbnb site. I want to list it there. Uh, or I've got a house uh, in this specific area that I want to list it on your website. And then what Airbnb does is they group it together. So once they have you know, oh, five or 10 or more, so in this example, surfing experiences, they created this landing page and they've linked it from various category pages on their website to allow users to go, oh, I can actually do uh, surfing experiences in Sydney, in Melbourne, in India, for example. So by curating and being logical and, and methodical in how you create these pages is going to be uh, really powerful for Woovly moving forward. Um, so how would you do that? Uh, you would conduct content and topic research. So um, SEMrush has a really good topic research tool. So what I've done here is I just entered a bucket list as a seed keyword. And you can see that it gave, gave me loads of content ideas and you know what's popular, what's not, and what would yield me uh, a lot of traffic. And you can see now there's things like um, 67 ideas for your just because bucket list, or 100 things to do before you die, or a bucket list of uh, things to do in America road trips and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure you would uh, have a lot of those already in the platform. It's all about cherry picking those that's really good. And then you can come up with the ultimate guide to uh, an American road trip. And you then curate all these different experiences and different stories together and have a dedicated landing page for, for that piece of um, content. Um, and then what I would do is also enforce some content requirements within the platform. Uh, so here there's two uh, examples that I pulled out from uh, the Woovly uh, bucket list um, entries, if you want to call it that. You can see the one on the left-hand side, which has the rate error, is actually missing an introductory content. So 
I can't really um, differentiate this page with another um, visit Paris bucket list uh, landing page because there's uh, there's no point of differentiation. Uh, whereas on the one on the example on the right has some quick facts and about oh what this bucket list is about. It's about camping in the Speedy Valley and quick facts about the place, how you would get there and stuff like that. So I think if you were to enforce some rules in terms of um, content requirements when someone posts a new bucket list or a new story, I think that's going to be uh, a more impactful from a traffic generation keyword targeting point of view. Um, and most importantly, because you've got so much of this link, uh, user generated content coming to the website and so much of this data that you're collecting via the website as well, I think it's a perfect opportunity for you to create what I like to call linkable assets. Um, so Airbnb, again, I'm using them as an example, uh, they released this piece of um, content on their press section of their website. Uh, late last year about uh, based on the data and the bookings and the people who add um, um, areas or, or properties to live in, um, in their wish list, um, this is their top 10 essentially. So this is based on data and based on things that are extremely popular within the platform. Um, so all they've done is they just looked into their database, see what's popular, curated, and then wrote a, a piece of content um, and then used that content as a bit of a link bait and uh, outreach uh, piece of content. So the, the process here is really simple because it's everything's digital these days. Hopefully you would have had um, some sort of a measurement um, strategy in place for the platform. So what I would do, I would gather, analyze all the data that you have and literally just curate and compile all the findings that you have. And you can start producing the content. Now, the piece of content can be a listicle, like uh, what Airbnb has, does, has, has, has done. It could be an image gallery. It could be in the form of charts or infographics. Um, it really does not matter. But uh, what you want is a piece of content that can be uh, portable to multiple mediums. So it can be translated into a listicle. It can be translated into infographic, charts, and stuff like that. So that would be the best practice. And then, obviously, once you have a piece of content, you're ready to publish, just make sure that you apply um, SEO 101 best practices. So title tags, description tags, image alt tags, so on and so forth, and your heading tags as well. And most importantly, once you publish, you want to promote that, you know, promote that on the channels that you own and also outreach to people who you might think would be interested with uh, this piece of content or this piece of research or data that you've produced uh, within your own platform. Um, and as an example, good content attract links, they attract attention. So here's an example of the Airbnb example previously. I've just literally plugged this into SEMrush uh, within the links uh, report. And you can see that it's attracting um, uh, referring domains and also bad links to that one piece of content. So if you do this periodically, that will get compounded. You'll start building more and more links over time. And what's going to happen is going to build you more and more authority to the website, and it will allow you to um, start ranking for more and more keywords and uh, the likelihood of you driving more and more traffic to the website. Um, another example is SEMrush themselves. You know, they release uh, the search engine ranking factors um, study, um, I think every year or every six months now, you guys refresh it, it's relentless, it's really good. Um, and as you can see, one piece of content, you invest in, in data, you pull everyone together. This is what I call hero content, So you're right? So this is something that you wouldn't do every month, you wouldn't do it every week, you would do it every six months or every year, and you just refresh it every year. Um, and you can see the staggering amount of um, links pointing to it and, and referring domains that would that one landing page of receiving is um, is massive. Um, so bottom line is um, utilize the assets that you have, dig deep into um, the content and data um, assets that you currently have. And you know, journalists and uh, media publications like um, studies. So if you have something compelling to say, uh, for example, with Woolly, you could potentially say uh, the top most popular, the 10 most popular uh, bucket list items um, in our platform is this, you know, literally listed down. And if you can chart it up in a nice pretty format where uh, publications and journalists can go copy and paste and put it into their publication, you know, I think that's a win. Um, and that's it from me. Awesome. That was a great audit. And I'm sure if anyone from Woobly or any other site is listening to that, then uh, I myself had a very, I think my idea of this content pyramid 
became clear itself and it thanks for making it easy for us uh, no so yeah uh, anshul so we yeah. are now auditing uh, masalabox.com and anshul is going to provide his insights on how they can make their content better definitely great so can you guys see the website yes great so uh, sticking ahead with the masala box so you know what i understand and what i've seen so this is a way uh, it, it's a fantastic platform where people in bangalore can actually order food for their you know different meals or weekends or you know when they're working so this is the core concept behind masala box what i definitely love about their website is the uh, you know the images they are really mouth watering of the indian food uh, which it actually excites the overall feel of ordering uh, on masala box but at the same point of time what i personally feel is uh, you know the design of the website could be more engaging uh, and more informative from a sense of how we actually uh, create websites these days so the images are very very beautiful you know they are very high quality images but the website structure and the website uh, uh, you know you know the way it should be created from the link perspective or from the uh, content perspective it's not perfect uh, you know they have done pretty good job when it comes to you know creating specific landing pages as per the keywords i've done some research and they're getting some uh, fantastic amount of users when when you go ahead and search something like tiffin in bangalore or tiffin services near koramangala or any of the specific areas in, in bangalore so that is you know the from a user coming perspective this is very nice but from a content perspective i think there can be multiple uh, you know there can be a lot of work that should be done so before i get into the specifics about what and how it should be done i just went and did a very quick site audit on uh, as in rush what it showed me was a lot of warnings and errors so which are actually coming up if i go on the warning site you know, the, uh, I just pulled out this particular PDF report from SEMS. What it showed me was that there are a lot of uh, you know images which do not have attributes. Then there are a lot of internal links which are actually no follow. Uh, so these are the certain issues which I think definitely should be uh, corrected on the website to ensure that they are not lacking on the SEO terms. <coughs> Okay, so I'll just proceed ahead with the specific concerns that I particularly found out now. Again, you know, quoting back the point that the, the images in, on the website are very good, but when I go into the specific pages, like if I go into the plans page, uh, I feel that the content that they have on each of these pages is very minimal, right? It should be a little bit more content explaining more about how they are doing and what they're, uh, you know, what they have to offer in explaining them because if you see this particular website, right, you know, these these, these are actually clickable filters but uh, it's not, I'm not sure if it is very easily understandable to uh, the users, right? Because it's not very easily distinguishable from a website uh, language. Going back to the homepage, I found some more concerns. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll move ahead. Uh, so if I go back and try to find out, you know, each of these pages. So if I go on, uh, just a moment, if I go on, say the party page right again the image here is very good but there's no banner text right so it, this could be a place where they could have really good h1 or h2 tags ensuring that the uh, you know the keyword targeting could happen but here it's a, it's simply an image uh, which actually takes away that opportunity so no matter how good it looks from a image perspective, it's lacking on the SEO perspective. Now, if I go down uh, to this particular page and I see the overall content, now this particular content in, in the way it has been put on the website, it's not that appealing, right? So it's not that readable from a user perspective here on the right side, you know, we, we can see that it's uh, being overlapped by the support page. So I personally believe that the content here can be a little bit more in depth. Uh, it can, it could be structured well, and there is a good amount of opportunity to put some keywords as well on this particular page so the same happens uh you know the, it's a similar feedback for the corporate page as well we can see here there's an image there could be a chance of having an h1 here and for the uh, content that is there it's very very limited and it should have much better content which would increase the overall uh, 
you know user experience for the uh, you know when a user actually on boards on the website you know there are good amount of cts coming in you know it definitely solves the purpose but you know when we do content marketing it's also about the credibility and authority of a particular platform uh, you know which is something that should come on the from the website uh, when we talk about it now moving ahead <coughs> yeah sorry so you know the another very interesting part that i actually found out on the website is the handcrafted section now what i could understand from this it that handcrafted is, is an e-commerce part of this particular uh, venture wherein they share uh, you know authentic spices or some recipes and and masalas for the end users who they can buy now if you even see this particular page you know it looks fine there's not much information on what and how but you know the more concerned part for me was when i actually get into any of these products i don't see any kind of description or specification for the uh, you know for the product which is where the you know which is where there should be definitely some amount of work should be done ensuring that what the product has to offer uh, because it will not only improve the conversions right it also at the same point of time would help you in the seo part of it because it also you know when 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 it comes to seo there has to be an html to text ratio which is significantly reduced in pages like these right so there could be a lot of chances where we can add content here or you know there could be a section here which which got, could talk about the the description it could have some reviews about the product you know to make it much better from a conversion uh, aspect as well now uh moving ahead you know through the another set of pages that i have here so i could find out that the about us page and the our story page is actually the same so you know there's some this small error that should be actually rectified but from the about us page you know you you'd see that the page is done pretty beautiful it looks good uh, the content could be again you know it could be a bit bit more readable from the text color and that perspective but yes you know it's it's the the images are very powerful that uh, it looks good it delicious of what it should be from uh, you know a, a company who's serving different meals and uh, you know going ahead with that so you know you know these are the basic things now i would want to move ahead to a very crucial uh, part of it which is which is about the blogs of the company you know blog of the company i was expecting the blog should be somewhere on the top right because that is where you know users usually expect someone should come down and find the blog it's a little uh, not expected that, that much from the users right so when i came to the blog i found a certain uh, concerns and my concerns are not about the content because you know if you see masala box they have been doing content for a good amount of time right and uh, i went and read their posts which are fantastic posts you know, very well written about the food and recipes that they want to put it out but my concern is about again from the ui perspective right so content is crucial content should be there but content cannot perform the best if it's not readable or if the ui and ux experience of the end platform uh, or the end content is not good enough right so from a ui perspective i think the blog should have been much better the another concern which i am seeing here is once i see this particular blog i can scroll down i can read over you know or all, all of the, the blog but i and and hence i don't need to actually click on any of these blogs and go to the next page now what it does is if i am a user and if i want to read a specific blog i have to scroll a lot right which is a bad bad user experience but the another concern is also that when a user is coming on such blogs he is not actually clicking the blog you know which is not giving enough time to you know change the url and then read what exactly it is there right so what i would recommend is on the main page they should have small uh, blocks you know which are or small parts where which are leading to the uh, to the main blog right that's that's one of the things that the uh, that masala box should definitely consider doing the other uh, concern was about so you know when we talk about seo right like like jason also suggested that uh, google is still a textual based search engine right and when we are talking about textual based search engine uh, you know google still understands of uh, you know how the how the how the crawler actually crawling the website right so when we are sitting here in 2019 the the easiest way of 
you know getting and the way of improving your seo could be helping google understand of how and what a website is right so when we talk about a particular blog it's it's all about organizing the content right so when we talk about a blog we have certain categories and topics under which each of the blog is categorized so that is one of the segments which i found the to be a concern because here you know you can see there there's a tag called uncategorized uh, you know the, if there's better category not only it would help per masala box get a much better the impact on the seo it would also make a very smart move from a user experience perspective because a user who wants to just check about the recipes they can go for that particular section and someone who wants to just try out new <clears throat> you know new uh, kind of uh, food it's another thing that's where they can uh, proceed another thing which i actually found out in the blog is probably the kind of images that they're using inside the blogs they seem to be somewhere uh, either copyrighted or uh, you know free stock image there's a little confusion between that so if in case these are not copyrighted image i think uh, you know giving a right attribution is really really crucial uh, for them to you know continue posting and you know the real, the real credit of the images should be definitely given to the core owners of the content uh yeah so the last particular point that i have to give is about so if i go back on the main website i found these there are a lot of these small uh, you know there are a lot of these landing pages which are directed towards these specific locations say tiffin service in indranagar tiffin services domlur so what is happening here is all of these pages if i go on to it right the all of these pages the structure and the content is exactly similar right that is my concern why because no matter what if we have different urls i think for each of these pages they should have uh, you know original content which would you know save them from duplicacy and also give them a much better uh, you know seo push when it comes to that so you know this is this is one thing that they should definitely definitely uh, look into it so when i summarize overall for yeah one thing that i actually missed i just wanted to share that as well so when i go to how it works now if i see this particular page uh, you know it looks very nice uh, you know it's very well explained of what to do what next to do uh, but my concern is that there's no content right i can see this is a same image uh, you know which can so there's zero content on this particular page so again you know if if the team can try keeping a mix of both image and content i think the you know it would be the best uh, way to proceed with so overall you know i would summarize what these guys are doing is fantastic good concept good good way of doing business and they are already getting a lot of users but basic concern is just you know improving on the ui improving the base you know considering the basics of seo uh, ensuring that the categorization is done well and for any of the pages where you have which are image heavy you know keep it a mix of both content and uh, images that's it fantastic uh, thank you for that review anshul i am sure if masalabox.com anyone is watching then they have a lot to carry away yeah. from this audit yep uh, so <coughs> i do have some questions from our youtube audience here uh, and i wish you can quickly go through them one of you can answer them for us uh, i have a question from somya he says that if i'm creating a blog about digital marketing only uh, people from marketing are going to read it so if he wants uh, say restaurant owners or fashion designers to read to come to the blog and read the, his insights about marketing uh, what content can he create for so he is writing something about digital marketing for the restaurant business i assume in general in general no not in general oh, just in general how yeah. do, how will he get a restaurant owner to uh, yeah. i see what he's trying to do okay um it's going to be tough <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> tough because there are two different yes niches two different topics uh but uh what i would do is if i were to write a blog post about digital marketing how would i get it in front of restaurant and cafe owners um i would publish that blog first and then 
I would maybe look at LinkedIn groups, maybe some Facebook groups as well, and see if there's any niche restaurant owner Facebook group where they discuss about how to promote their restaurants and stuff like that. And then see how you can contribute to the conversations and then subtly drop your blog post link into the conversation or Reddit as well. I'm pretty sure Reddit, there'll be loads of people discussing about how to run a restaurant or promote a restaurant, so on and so forth. I, that's how I would approach it. Great. Uh, Anshu, what's your take on it? Mm, I guess we are stuck. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, o Onam wants to know, uh, you guys did uh, some insights on SEO. So if how, if someone wants to know how anchor text affects the overall ranking of a backlink. So now we are talking about backlinks in content. Uh, so do we need exact anchor, anchor text, exact keyword anchor text or something else works? Yeah. Anshul, can you take that? Yeah, I think anchor text actually makes a you know very important role in SEO. Yes, yes. Guys, can you hear me? I think we lost you, and now I can hear you. Okay. I think I think there's some freezing. Yeah, here. yeah. Jason, can you quickly jump in? Like, how important? Yeah, sure. Anchor um, text. Yeah, uh, anchor text. <laughs> yes, it used to be uh, really, really important. That's how traditionally people rank websites. The more, let's just say, if I sell soccer boots and. Um, uh, you know, I'm re reversing back to 10 years ago. Uh, the more people linking to your website with soccer brutes, soccer brutes, soccer brutes is going to help you rank really highly. But, you know, Google, as Google evolved and, you know, they try to eradicate all the spammers, gaming the system, uh, exact match anchor text links um, are actually very um, risky these days because. Um, what you want is to vary it. You want a mixture of types of links coming to your website. So you don't just focus on one single anchor text uh, because that's not how day-to-day uh, -day users link to websites. So if my mom was to write a blog post about something, she would say, go here, and they will link here as the anchor text link. So that's a bit more natural. So if I were doing uh, proactive link building work, I would try and change it up a little bit. I, do, I wouldn't just focus on a single anchor text, um, exact match anchor text link. I would vary it a little bit. Right. Uh, that's a good strategy. Uh, and now someone called Ria wants to know that uh, while she's outreaching for guest blogging publications, only a few of them revert. So uh, is there a way to scale this process or is it best to uh, try and have a customized pitch for each publication? Uh, that is how she's doing it now. Uh, but of course, then it takes a lot of time and revenue considerations come at stake. So uh, is it better to target sites that would directly uh, uh, accept her articles, finished blog posts, or is uh, customizing a pitch to every strat, every website better? Or would they say that, um, uh, so what are your tips for structuring a pitch? I personally think it is better to have a customized pitch for every different site. Again, it's not scalable, but that is a risk you have to take if you want to get on the really good platforms. What are your thoughts on it, Jason? Um, I agree, but I think it boils back down to what is your objective. Um, mm -hmm. If the objective is for uh, SEO link building purposes, then I would I wouldn't go for volume. I would go for quality. So, like you said, I would I would put in the effort to create a customized uh, page and customized outreach uh, emails, 
uh, and put in the effort to even maybe sometimes follow up with a phone call to go, hey, I sent you that email the other day. Did you manage to get it? Um, that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so less volume, but more quality. Uh, but if the objective is to spread the word far and wide that you've got something really, really good that you want to try to promote, then, you know, um, I would put into system, I would probably put it into a system like Pitchbox or, or Busstream and not mass spam, but, you know, using a system or a tool to help you scale that process uh, with some um, um, quality control parameters in place. That's what I would say. So I think we'll wrap it up with one final question, which is at the top of all content marketers' minds. How do you define your ROI from, uh, are there any metrics that help you define ROI from your outreach uh, campaigns? Like if, if you're creating content on your own site, then you have all the insights from your analytics or other sources. But when you are creating content for third party platforms, you don't have any uh, first hand metrics. So uh, what do you guys suggest that how, how can we be more effective in this? OK, so do you want me to go ahead? Yeah, please. Okay. So, uh, you know, like I said, one of the goals of content marketing, in fact, for me was brand awareness, right? And if that's my goal, I can definitely easily calculate the ROI of it. So, for example, even when you're posting a particular content piece on a third party platform, right, you can always understand what kind of, uh, you know, that you can always visualize uh, an increase in the traffic from your Google Analytics or other platforms as well. So you can see and you can, uh, and in fact, using seamless, you can identify the increase in the traffic that's happening for certain referral channels. So that's a very, very clear uh, way of identifying uh, if more users are coming from that particular channel. The other uh, thing that also impacts, you know, the brand awareness is shareability of the content, right? So if you have, if you're posting a particular content on third party websites and uh, you know either you use seamrush or you use platforms like bus or more you know you can identify uh, you can understand if that particular post is getting more shares on multiple social media platforms and if that is happening then you can all you know always understand that hey you know my content is being read by audiences across platform and which will actually help you understand the overall roi out of it jason anything to add uh, I Disney. think it's pretty spot on. So I think the first the first point is to make sure that you've got proper Google Analytics in place. And then when you, tr I think the most important thing to justify ROI is actually not to look at just the channel, but within the multi-channel report in uh, Google Analytics, because someone might come into your website via the piece of content that they read on Medium, for example. They click okay. through, they come to the website, they might not transact right then and there they might go do something else uh, and then they saw they remembered you and then they came back into direct and type in the url or they search you on um, google and they came through organic so it's always important to look at the multi-channel report and see if that referrer from medium actually contributed to the overall conversion that's what i would um, use to justify roi because content is so such a long uh conversion life cycle that it wouldn't convert direct, but it might convert at a later stage or contribute to a conversion. Awesome. So I think we have the answers, all of the answers here. And it's nearly time to wrap up. I, what, I would like you guys to uh, tell the audience that what is the best way to reach you and uh, what is your one takeaway that you wish the audience to know? Uh, what is the most important thing while you do content marketing? in your perspective so one good takeaway and how people can reach you if they have more questions or they want to get in touch with you um so my one tip is utilize the data that's freely available so use tools like scm rush google analytics use your own internal database uh, or crm uh, data and see if you can make something meaningful out of it because chances are nine out of ten There'll be something really good that you can come up with just by looking into your own data And then like I said people like genuine 
content. They're like case study type of content where you back it up with uh, tangible uh, data that you can show progress or back it up with you know some evidence that you actually uh, can provide what you're trying to say that you provide um, to the public. Um, and that was my one tip. And also patience, Roy, and you mentioned once right at the start, you know, uh, content marketing is a, is a long life cycle. You don't see immediate results, but if you keep chipping away at it, the results will come. So be patient about it. Um, and my name is Jason. You can reach me on Twitter at Jason Mun. Thanks, Jason. Anshul, your takeaway and how can people reach you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, fantastic, you know, fantastic webinar. What I actually uh, recommend people to focus when it comes to content marketing and reaching out is again, like, you know, what talk about patience. Patience is the key of any marketing uh, objective, which is supposed to be followed by the right sort of discipline that has to come in marketing, right? If you are patient enough and if you're doing the right thing again and again, I'm sure you definitely get the results out of it. Uh, consistency is the other thing which you should be focusing on when it is about creating the content or reaching out to your target audiences. Uh, you know, these are the basic things that we should focus on. Uh, from the outreach perspective, always try to focus on who your target audience is and, you know, what your target platform actually requires from your content. Build relationships and, you know, go for the uh, long term. So, yeah, that's it. You can, you know, my name is Anshul. You can always reach out to me on, I, I prefer LinkedIn, so you can always reach out to me there and, you know, we can proceed right from there. Great. Thanks, guys. You have been great today. And I'm sure our reader, our viewers have uh, had a lot of things to learn, new things about content marketing, SEO, and much more to learn from you. And uh, so this is Rohan Ayer signing off. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at search Rook there. And we will be back next month on the 13th of February. We'll be discussing social media on Content Club. India. So guys, content marketers, digital marketers, please join me next time too. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks guys. Thank you. Bye.